Okay, I think majority of my audience is going to learn something new today by watching this video. It's going to be a very technical video though. The Fed said that they're going to cut interest rate this week and when you're watching this video, they might already have cut the interest rate. I want to use this opportunity to talk about how Fed interest rate affect the Chinese economy and also how it affect the value of renminbi. Now, during earlier this year, the famous Peter Zihon here said that the interest rate is going to stay high for many years to come. In fact, I think he went as far as to say that the interest rate at that moment, which was made this year, is the lowest it's going to be for the next several years or something. So if the Fed decided to lower interest rate, then he's bust. <laughs> Okay, now listen to this. Around the same time, well, throughout the entire last two years, basically, there are many, many Chinese and foreigners who are making all kinds of video here on YouTube saying that the renminbi is going to collapse, is going to be wolfless, which I consider those channels to be more like anti-Chinese propaganda channels, but Hey, they make a lot of different statistics and numbers and all kind of explanations. For example, here in this channel, uh, Lace Real Talk, I think that's the name of the channel. Uh, there are, I think, audience who watch my channel and also watch her channel. She claimed that Renminbi's true value should be a lot less and that the exchange rate between US dollar and renminbi should be something like 1 US dollar to 15 renminbi or 20 renminbi, something like that. Now, I consider those channels to be propaganda channel, but hey, many people consider my channel to be, you know, Chinese propaganda. So that's fine. We are free to talk about our own predictions and opinions, right? Okay, during my months chatting with my audience in the comment section and in also other channels uh, comment section, I felt like many of my Western audience uh, almost have this cartoonish understanding of currency. So I think this is a good opportunity to make a video about that. And I think you will find something very interesting in this video. It is very complicated for sure, but let me try my best to explain this, okay? Here we go. Now, let's look at the exchange rate of renminbi to US dollar today. Well, today is September 16th for my future audience who watch this video weeks and months afterward is sitting at 7.09 so one us dollar to 7.09 renminbi all right now there are two things that affect short-term currency value first is the sudden geopolitical event such as uh, a war broke out uh whether it's a civil war a cross-border war war dramatically increase the risk and capital do not like to stay in risky places right that's why Euro went down very quickly when the war started in Ukraine. And that's also why Russia have to massively hike its domestic central bank interest rate to increase its attractiveness for capital to stay and prevent those capital from fleeing the country, protecting the ruble's position. The second thing is the Fed interest rate, all right? If Fed hikes interest rate, other currency will usually devalue against the USD. When Fed reduces interest rate, other currency will improve its value towards USD. Now, let me show you guys a graph here, okay? The US dollar versus renminbi reaches its lowest point on February 26, 2022. As you can see here, this is all official data you can check online, okay? It's one US dollar to 6.32 renminbi. And this is at the beginning of the Ukraine war. This is due to massive amount of money printing during the pandemic years, which we experienced a huge amount of USD flooding into global market. But a lot of them flood into Chinese market to buy Chinese goods. And you know, Chinese get a lot of these US dollar from surplus trading. That usually damage okay, US dollar precision because not just that the US overprint the currency, 
but it lacks the tool to balance the trade deflect against current uh, countries like China, meaning you have tons of currency running around the world and US has no goods to trade for them. That's one of the reasons US started hiking interest rate along with the Ukraine war to reshore those US dollars in global circulation. Also to control inflation, of course. Now, let me show you guys the big picture here. The Fed start to hike interest rate at exact the same time Ukraine war began, okay? It's not coincident, it's pre-planned. It's part of the harvesting cycle. Look at the graph here. It started the first interest rate hike in March. So many Chinese investors understood what this is and planned ahead, okay? Listen to this carefully, and if you need to think about it, you can pause the video. It's like the Japan interest carry trade, but not exactly the same. The Chinese uh, is doing a little bit differently, okay? Chinese has a very unique and strict currency exchange rate policy. Each individual can only purchase a limited amount of foreign currency per year, 50,000 US dollars to be exact. If you run an export business, you can play around the numbers a little bit. And that is important when I get to the explanation here, okay? Now, at the beginning of February 2022, renminbi is strong versus the dollar, as I just explained, 1 to 6.32. You guys can check these numbers, okay, to verify. When this cycle starts, you need to find ways to convert as much renminbi into US dollar as possible, while renminbi is still strong versus the dollar, okay? There are people in China who pay sometimes a huge amount of fee to convert renminbi into US dollar through uh, almost gray illegal means, uh, shadow banks and underground banks, okay? You need to do it quickly because if everyone starts to do it and do it before you do it, the renminbi will crash very quickly. And Chinese central bank will also adjust the interest rate and the value exchange to offset this uh, renminbi depreciation. And you guys see here in the graph, there's a stiff depreciation of renminbi versus the dollar on the graph, right when the interest rate hike, you see, uh, here in March, 2022. Now, when Fed continue to hike interest rate, more liquidity in China will travel abroad into US dollar and sit in US banks to gain high interest rate dividends or interest payment. It also pushes US asset classes like housing and stock market higher. But those index are more complicated to explain, so I'm not gonna go into the detail here. Now, there's an important mechanic you guys need to understand in China's manufacturing export sector, which runs something like 1 trillion surplus a year. Um, let's assume, okay, right now, me and you, we run a factory in China, okay? We export our products to, let's say, Europe, all right? For manufacturing business, you need to have this kind of operation capital sitting on the side, cash, all right? To purchase components, raw materials, pay your employee salaries or for any kind of emergency events. And this is both domestically in China and also internationally, okay? Let's say we have 5 million euro cash, okay? Sitting on the side, just for these kind of uh, manufacturing overheads. 4 million euros will be in China, so roughly 30 million renminbi, and there will be 1 million euros sitting in a foreign account somewhere else outside of China. And this is normal. You have more money ready in China because you have to pay salary and pay all kinds of uh, manufacturing overheads. Now, Hong Kong, for example, is a good place to part your money because you can move your money anywhere around the world, much more flexible. In China, you cannot. You have uh, limited uh, ways to move those money out, right? When Fed start to hike the interest rate, we want to hold more US dollar, not renminbi. 
because with US dollar, we can put in those US banks or buy US treasury bonds at almost 6% interest rate. Uh, when you consider some of the money market they offer here in Bank of America and Wells Fargo and so on. So what do we do? We will convert the euro into US dollar, right? Uh, so we can sit them in a US bank. But what about, let's say, renminbi in China? How, how do we move those out? We can, right? Uh, there's a restriction. There are many ways to do it besides the illegal way of moving money out. So when we export our factory products to Europe, we get paid in euros, right? So what we do is that we do not convert those euro back to renminbi, which what we are supposed to do in order to pay salary and all that. Now, instead, we will convert those euros into US dollar and park the money outside and taking those dividend earnings, all right? And to run the factory in China during this time, we'll use our operation capital, the money that we left in China, the 30 million RMB, we use those money to cover our domestic expenses in China. So over the period of several months, we will empty our RMB account in China while stacking up our USD account here abroad so we can buy more treasury bonds. What I do is I just do not convert my euros into renminbi. Instead, I convert them into USD and just let my renminbi account to run low. And to make this deal even sweeter, when we run out of renminbi in China, since eventually those 30 million will run dry, we have to start converting some euros into renminbi to pay salary and suppliers. Because renminbi at this moment is at a weaker stage we can get more renminbi out of each euro or dollar when we convert them back to renminbi. Now, imagine this, okay? Renminbi at one point here in October 28th, uh, 2023, it reaches a low point of one US dollar versus 7.3 renminbi. So over the course of just 18 months, the renminbi depreciate by 16%, okay? from 6.32 to 7.3. And many Chinese businessmen have a lot of their money sitting in US dollar accounts and US treasury bonds feeding on those high yield interest, right? Now, several Chinese economists did some math on this. You guys wanna guess how much Chinese money uh, is sitting in US bank now doing this kind of, you know, semi carry trade business two trillion us dollar two trillion let me put two trillion us dollar into perspective for you guys okay the the annual gdp of germany is roughly four trillion us dollar the total amount of all americans have in their saving account as of July 2024, is 600 billion. Okay. Well, you guys probably will say, oh, there's a Chinese economist. Uh, he's lying. Those numbers are false. Okay. Well, not entirely. Ladies and gentlemen, the total Chinese saving as of beginning of this year, 2024, is sitting at a whopping 19.13 trillion. US dollar, which is roughly 140 trillion in renminbi, okay? Sitting in China, that is. So the Chinese population is four times compared to the United States, you know, 1.4 billion versus 350 million. But the total saving of Chinese half is roughly 30 times more than the total American savings, 600 billion versus 19 trillion. So if there's 19 trillion in terms of saving in US dollar in China, it's not hard to believe there's 2 trillion dangling outside of China that also belong to the Chinese, right? If you have 20 million euros in saving, you know, it's not hard to imagine you might also have 2 million US dollars sitting in a US bank, for example. So 
But this is entirely possible. Two trillion is not an overestimate of the number. It is very possible. Okay. Now here comes the turning point when the Fed start to reduce interest rate, like what they announce and what they are going to do. And when you watch this video, they might already reduce their interest rate. The T bond and the saving account interest rate also reduce, right? So the money Chinese have in US dollar will start traveling back to renminbi. Now, this is when the musical chair scenario kicks in, okay? When US dollar start to travel back to renminbi, it will drive up the demand for renminbi, offshore renminbi especially, and drive up the demand for renminbi and the value of renminbi. So the smart investors will need to do the math. If your money gets stuck here in the United States when the interest rates start to go down dramatically and other people do the conversion of US dollar into renminbi first, it will drive up the renminbi value. And when you do it late, uh, the renminbi is already very expensive. So when you convert your US dollar back to renminbi at a late stage, you will have to buy expensive renminbi which will erase your interest rate gain over the past few years while the you know fed has a high interest rate and you make money by putting your us dollar in the treasury bonds so a smart chinese investor can anticipate all these change and plan ahead and maximize the gain okay let me do the math for you guys really quickly here now if you convert renminbi into us dollar at the beginning very quickly when it was one US dollar versus 6.3 renminbi. And you see those US dollar in a juicy high yield bank account here in US or buy those uh, short term high interest rate T-bonds, you will earn a lot of interest dividends, right? And when you start to sell your US dollar when the renminbi is still weak, and convert them back to renminbi. You make a lot of money. So if you do it smartly, you will make money two ways, okay? You get the dividends here in United States. You also gain the difference in currency value when you convert it into US dollar, and then you make money again by converting the money back into renminbi. So if you do the math here, so if you time the entire thing right, within just two years, your 1 million, assuming that is your starting principle, will become something like 1.3 million US dollars, if not more, which is not bad given it is almost risk free. And we're talking about trillions of US dollars doing this, okay? But if you're not a good investor, you're like a newbie and you pay expensive fee to get your money out of China uh, into US dollar and you screw up the timing and got stuck here in US dollar and not able to go back to renminbi early enough, your entire gain on dividends here will be erased and you might end up losing money over this time. So look at this next graph okay, over here, okay? The US dollar value versus renminbi took a huge dive when Fed announced that they might reduce interest rates starting in September. And that announcement was made back in July. And you can see here, there's a steep decline of US dollar value uh, versus renminbi. So ver renminbi's value went up. This is because some of the investor uh, already anticipate the interest rate cut and start fleeing the US dollar. Now, you ask me, how do I know all this stuff? Because, well, I'm one of the many players here, okay? There's a... Uh, tiny 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 bit of that two trillion belong to me so there's an upward of two trillion us dollar going to flee us back to china not the entire two trillion but a lot of that and this is only between us and china but i think this amount between us china is the biggest the ja the japanese one is a little bit different they use a lot of leverage and what china is using here a lot of them are just savings and trade surplus. 
So I want to draw a conclusion here. See if you guys can understand my perspective of all of this, okay? Those YouTubers, some of those financial gurus, there are many, many of them, especially in the Chinese language space here on YouTube and in TikTok and the Chinese Douyin and all those things. Those that have been singing about, you know, renminbi collapsing, it's going to be one US dollar versus something like 20 renminbi, renminbi is going to zero, okay? They belong to one of the following. They are either idiots who don't know what they're talking about, or they are profiting from it, okay? Because many of them are backed by those underground banks who charge a huge amount of fee to scam Chinese to convert their renminbi to US dollar at a huge fee. They charge something like 20, 30% of service fee. Uh, imagine if you buy 1 million US dollar, you have to pay $300,000 in service fee. That's a lot of money. So, and people still do it because people believe in this kind of narrative because they believe in this kind of scam. And um, to think about it, if you believe it, it actually is not expensive, right? If renminbi is going to collapse in value 100%, 200% or collapse to zero or something, then 30% service fee is nothing because you cannot get the money out through conventional means. There's a limit of $50,000. And if you have, for example, 10 million or 100 million in China, you want to get them out. You don't mind playing 20% service fee to some agents to convert them into US dollar because 80% of something is better than 0% of everything, right? <laughs> and I mean, I watched some of those live broadcasts. Uh, uh, it is a sight to behold, really. I, I want to try to play this. Um, let me see if I can play this. I, I will try to cosplay their, their, their atmosphere. So in their entire video, what they do is that, okay, Xi Jinping is dying and China is going to enter civil war. Uh, there will be a uh, rebellion in the country and the renminbi's value is going to be uh, less than this, you know? And all your hard work over the years is going to go to nothing. And your kids is going to starve. Your parents is going to starve. You are going to starve. And you will suffer um, emotional yes, damage. Yes, emotional damage, okay? For the rest of your life. And in order to save yourself, okay? I have this friend here who's going to help you, other agents will charge you something like 50% service fee. And my friend here will only charge you 45, 50, okay? And it's a good deal ticket, you know, be a man. And when you come back tomorrow, the deal will be gone. So that's all they're saying for like an entire year, having people to, you know, convert their RMB into US dollar. Imagine 19 trillion US dollar holding in Chinese, saving accounts. If just they're able to, you know, scam 0.1% of their money, it will be hundreds of billions and billions and billions of uh, fees they can charge over those, you know, Chinese guys who got scammed. Now, listen to this. The US financial sector also encouraged this process as well because it will help them complete the harvest cycle and makes a lot of money at the same time. Why you see them paying, you know, billions to demonize China on social media, here on YouTube, saying all those things about China is about to collapse narrative because it is profitable for them to reshore those US dollar, okay? So for my audience who can understand what I just said here, this is the core mechanic of modern day neocolonialism, okay? Through financial tools and media propaganda, the US can rob other countries' wealth without having to physically invade your country by swinging the interest rate and changing the currency value. People around the world undersell their labor value by underselling their own currency into US dollar. It's like a big money scam casino, which US is forcing everyone to play this game. Yes, there will be a few winners. Um, people who got out richer, um, those who understand the rigging or is part of the operator, but majority of the people will end up losing. I mean, how would the casino make money if, you know, everybody wins, right? Now, one final closing statement. 
as I said at the beginning of this video, there's two largest determining factor. One is Fed interest rate paired with laws of media propaganda. The other one is war. So in extreme cases, uh, if US cannot complete the cycle with a volume they aim for, they need to provoke conflict to force capital to flee those areas into safe haven, the US dollar. And it is not provoking war in random places. You have to do it in places where it is rich, places where capital like to stay. There are currently three places on this planet where capital like to stay, outside of the US, of course. Europe is one. This is what I've been saying continuously in this channel. The war in Ukraine was provoked intentionally by the US to weaken the euro. The second is Middle East because the oil trade surplus. There's a lot of surplus trade in the Middle East that is very beneficial to the financial sector. And my audience can use their head to think that, well, maybe there's some additional intention, motivation for US and Israel to keep the war running in the Middle East and keep the tension high. And then finally, the third place, East Asia. <laughs> what I just explained, you know, 19 trillion US dollar of saving. If you know you don't rob China, who are you going to rob? Yeah, you know, there's no point to start a war in let's say South America. You know, th th those places are most of the country are running bankrupt already. Which is why, as I explained in my previous video, I think the war is likely to happen in Taiwan because, because the next cycle will be here within two to three years. Um, it used to be every cycle, it usually used to be what, 10, 15 years. But now because of how US run the system, the cycle will become shorter and more chaotic, I <laughs> will say. And if US can't come peak the cycle through normal means uh, in East Asia, it will have to get creative. Okay, creative. You know what I mean by now, why there's a chance for war. So I keep saying this in my channel that the US military industrial complex, the US media outlet, and also the US foreign policy department, all three of them serve the US financial and monetary sector okay and today we're living in a colonial system a financial colonial system hidden under a, a fat layer of media propaganda that's what we are going through right now so this guy president Lai of taiwan is basically zelensky number two and he's going to be put into action by the u.s financial sector when US trigger the next financial cycle, basically. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. I'll see you guys in the next video.